It's time to get your arrows popping. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is solving linear equations part four. That's right. Part four is dealing with solving linear equations of the form a over b times x equals to c. Now, you may be wondering, well, what is this form, Mr. Witt? Well, I'll tell you. It is a form that I actually love a lot. And the reason why is because I'm going to show you guys four different ways to solve a linear equation that is in this form. Are you ready? Let's check it out. Well, I'm going to give you two examples to work with today, guys. And the first is 1 8th n equals negative 3. The second is 3 7 x equals 9. Let's see how this plays out, shall we? And keep in mind that we will still be implementing when necessary all of your property of equality techniques that we have introduced in this series, plus I guarantee you to show you at least one additional property in this video. So let's move on. Here in problem number one, let's call this method A, guys. In method A, multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of the coefficient. So remember, the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So when I say that you can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient, if you were to flip 1 8th, you'd get 8 over 1, right? So therefore, the reciprocal of our coefficient, that value is going to be 8. And I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 1 8th, which is 8. And it'll look just like this. Multiplying 8 times 1 8th, and mind you, we're utilizing right now the multiplication property of equality, okay? So even though I'm saying we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the coefficient, it's still falling under the umbrella of one of the properties of equality that I shared with you earlier. Simplifying, your 8 will cancel out because 8 times its reciprocal, 1 8th, reduces to 1. So we'll bring down the variable n, and 8 times negative 3 gives you a result of negative 24. Red box it. That's your answer, guys. So that is the first method I wanted to show you. In the second method I wanted to show you, we can set up the equation as a proportion. So by doing that, you want to make sure that one, you place the variable in the numerator and that you convert both sides of the equation into a fraction. So here, one times n gives us n over eight. And on the right side, you can make this negative three divided by one. Once you have a proportion set up, meaning a fraction set equal to another fraction, you can use what is called the extremes means method. That's another property, guys, that I wanted to share with you. But you may know it as cross multiplying. That's right. The tried and true, <laughs> the go to for a lot of students, the cross multiplication method. We're going to multiply this out and you'll end up with one times n which is n and eight times negative three which is negative 24 and once again you will red box it people so that was the second method i wanted to show you all right so let's move on to the third method we'll call it c right method c in this third method guys you can multiply both sides of the equation by the lcd of the entire equation the least common denominator and lo and behold we only have one denominator here and that's going to be eight right so the lcd of the entire equation is eight let's go ahead and multiply both sides by eight right so you'll have eight times the one eighth n and that's going to equal to eight times negative three so this method is multiplying both sides by the lcd now i know what you're saying I know what you're saying. You're saying, Mr. Witt, this looks exactly like the first method. And you would be right. However, that's only because the particular coefficient that we have, 1 8th, the reciprocal of it just so happens to be identical to the LCD. In method A, we were multiplying by the flip of the coefficient. Whereas here, we're just multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. And that will not always be the same value, I promise. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Continue simplifying this out. Here, your eights will cancel out. You'll be bringing down n, which equals to negative 24, and red box it. 
Continuing on with our fourth method, guys. And the fourth method simply uses the division property of equality. Yeah, because notice we have one eighth multiplying on our variable n. In order to isolate the variable, you want to do the opposite operation. Well, what is the opposite operation of multiplication? It's division. That's why we're going to use the division property of equality, guys. So go ahead and divide both sides by one eighth. That's exactly what we're going to do here. On the left side, the one eighths will cancel out. One eighth divided by one eighth is just one. So I have n. And then on the right side, notice how I write this, guys. You'll have negative three divided by one eighth. And recall that when you're dividing by a fraction, you can set it up as negative three over one, converting that integer into a fraction and then multiplying by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So you'll have eight over one and then multiplying straight across, you'll end up with negative 24 over one, which simplifies to give you negative 24 red boxing it. So there you go, guys. That is four ways to solve an equation in the form of a over b times x equals to c. Let's check out our second example. Here we have it. We have 3 sevenths x equals to 9. So let's go ahead and continue by checking out the first method. The first method was multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. So check this out this time, guys. You'll be multiplying by 7 thirds this time. See, it's not identical to the denominator, right? So this time we expect a different result, especially when it goes to the third method that we were trying out, guys. Then you want to simplify this. Notice how the numerators and the denominators, everything cancels out to give you X as a result. On the right side, three goes into nine three times, then multiplying straight across seven times three, that gives you 21 red box it. Here you have it, people. There you go. Now let's look at method B, guys. We had once again the 3 7 x equals 9. And in method B, we converted everything into a proportion. So we would want to rewrite this. Remember to bring that variable up and you'll have 3x over 7 equals 9 over 1. And we then want to use the extremes means method, aka we want to cross multiply. So by cross multiplying here, you'll have 3x equals 63. From there, you'll be dividing both sides by 3 and then simplifying, which gives you x equals 21. Red box it. Here you have it, people. All right. Now for method C. Remember method C was multiplying both sides by the LCD. The LCD stands for the least common denominator, guys. So when you're looking at this problem, you're not going to end up with the same result as we were in method A, right? I promised you that. So here you're just going to be multiplying both sides by 7, which is your LCD, your least common denominator of the entire equation. And you'll have 7 times 9 on the right side. See, so I told you it's not the same. So simplifying, your 7s will cancel out. You'll be bringing down 3x, which equals to 63, then using the division property of equality, divide both sides by 3, simplify, and you'll find that x equals 21. Red box it. Finally, for part D, we'll be simply using the division property of equality, all right? So as it stands with the 3 sevenths times x, we're going to be dividing both sides by 3 sevenths. So in dividing both sides by 3 sevenths, that coefficient, the value in front of the variable there, we'll be able to simplify this. As the 3 sevenths cancel out, you'll have x equals to 9 divided by 3 sevenths. That's what this looks like after we rewrite it traditionally, right? So then you'll continue to rewrite this as we know that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. We'll have 9 over 1, converting that into an improper fraction, times 7 thirds. And then I prefer to simplify before I multiply. So I'll have 3 going into itself once, 3 going into 9 three times, then multiplying straight across. 3 times 7 is 21. And 1 times 1 is 1. This simplifies to give you a result of 21 red box it people 
And this concludes our examples for solving linear equations, part four, solving linear equations of the form A over B X equals C people. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I hope you enjoyed this video guys. Peace. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you hanging out with Fort Bend Tutoring. Like the video, comment, and subscribe.